Hello and welcome back for another season of Fisher Football Focus. This is your host, James Bailey, back again for another year of Talking Fisher Football. Coming off last season's 7-4 campaign, the Cardinals look to start this season strong and get back into the Division III playoffs. The season began on September 3rd when the Fisher took on Olivet College of Michigan. In a game that was viewed by many fresh faces on the first day of freshman orientation, Olivet looked mostly disoriented. In the Cardinals' first possession, senior quarterback Matt Nayton connected with Mike Colicchio on a 19-yard Fisher touchdown to put the Cardinals up 7-0 early. Later on in the first, junior running back Tony Fusco scampers in from 15 yards up to put the Cardinals up 14-zip. Following another Fisher score, Olivet would try to stop the bleeding with Cornelius Saxing in oh so close to the goal line, only to get stripped by Chris Barilla. Anthony Lee would recover for the Cardinals, and Fisher would go into halftime up by a score of 26-0. It would be all Fisher in the second half. The Cardinals' powerful running back duel would strike again in the fourth. James Chambers takes this carry down the left sideline, 62 yards deep into the Olivet red zone. His running back buddy, Tony Fusco, pops in, says, thank you very much, bud, I got it from here. Plunges in from five yards out, extending the Cardinal lead. When it was all said and done, the Cardinals would finish on top 52 to 10. Nathan ended up with 205 passing yards and four touchdowns. Fusco and Chambers would combine for three scores. It was the dominant performance to open the season for the Cardinals. This past weekend, the Cardinals finished their non-conference slate with a trip to Massachusetts to take on Springfield College. It was the school's first meeting since 2011 when Fisher pulled out a 33-6 victory. Let's see how they fared this time. Fisher wasted no time getting going as Nathan connects with tight end Shane Ross for a touchdown in the first possession of the game. Springfield would keep pace though, capping a 15-play drive with a Steve Comey touchdown on their next possession, tying things back up at 7. On the first play of Fisher's next drive, Nathan connects deep with Mike Colicchio, 47 yards. Fusco would finish the short drive with a one-yard touchdown run to give the Cardinals a 14-7 advantage. Now in the second quarter, Fisher would put together another scoring drive, capped this time by a seven-yard Nathan touchdown scamper to put Fisher up 21-7, going into the half. After a scoreless third quarter, Nathan would air it out again, deep to Colicchio. The doer connects for a 48-yard touchdown to give the Cardinals a comfortable 28-7 lead. But Springfield wouldn't roll over yet. Joshua Thomas ties in here from a yard out to cut into the Fisher lead. Springfield would force a Cardinal punt on the next drive, and uh-oh, I don't think that's how they practice it. The snap gets away from punter Brandon Bells, and Springfield is gifted with fantastic field position. Comey would score two plays later to cut Fisher's lead to a single score. The Cardinals would go three and out on their next drive, and all of a sudden, Springfield has a chance to tie the game. But not so fast. Serial drive killer Alec Mortellaro comes up with a timely interception, a specialty of his. Watch the play again. Mortellaro, number seven on the left of your screen, reads the play from the very snap. Immediately sets himself in position to pick Comey's pass and gets the ball back for the Cardinals late in the fourth quarter. And for good measure, Nathan on the very next play goes deep to his old friend Colicchio again. This time Colicchio puts on some nice moves after the catch to get in the end zone. The 54-yard touchdown would give Fisher a 31-21 advantage, and that would be the final score. Nathan ends up with 292 passing yards and four total touchdowns. Colicchio ends up with 170 receiving yards and two scores. Fisher, they end up 2-0, entering the Empire 8 sleep. Coming up next, I'll have head coach Paul Vosberg on for his first appearance of the season. You won't want to miss it. I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Some things take a while to come back. Three, two, champions! Champions! But I've got some good buddies. I guess they're helping me figure it out. Being used to doing something with a cigarette makes it hard to do it without one. But if I can relearn to hang out with my friends without cigarettes, then I can relearn anything without cigarettes. Relearn life without cigarettes. Free at becomeanx.org. A new way to think about quitting. Welcome back to Fisher Football Focus, joined now by head coach Paul Vosberg. Once again, welcome back to your first appearance of this season. Thanks for having me. All right, so coach, uh, you had two big non-conference wins to open up the season. Um, you know, kind of two different fa two different fashion too, with the, the blowout win against Olivet, 52-10, and then the uh, little bit closer game against Springfield, the 35-21 win. Which one means more to your team? Well, I think the one that was most physical, of course, was uh, against Springfield College. Uh, we had played Springfield in the past because at one time they were an Empire 8 team, and uh, we had played them in the postseason in the playoffs and so on. So uh, that was a big win for us. We, we had a lot of respect for Olivet going into the game. They were a 9-1 team the year before and just missed making the playoffs. And uh, But 
we we knew the tradition of Springfield College and and so on. And they're a different team because they the offense that they run make them different. It makes it tough to prepare for them. You only get to see that offense maybe once a year. Mm -hmm. uh, thank goodness it's only once a year. But um, so the the win over Springfield was great in the fact that uh, that was a we thought more of a physical opponent than Olivet, not taking anything away from Olivet. They had, they ended up winning this weekend, Olivet. Uh, they beat uh, Elmhurst College and, and beat, beat them pretty good. So um, that, but I would still say the Springfield game. And I was going to get into my next question. You mentioned uh, Olivet being a 91 team last year, winning by two touchdowns this past week. Um, so going out there winning 52 to 10, you, were you guys, you know, six touchdowns better than them? What, what, what was there that really led to that sort of uh, margin of victory? Well, I think our kids stayed focused for the whole 60 minutes in all three aspects of our game. Uh, I think we all played them in all three aspects, and, and uh, our, our kids just never uh, uh, gave, gave up. I mean, as far as they, they kept the pressure on Olivet the whole time and, and so on, and they ended up beating a, a very good football team by a big score. We came up with big plays when we needed to against Olivet. Uh, they had a couple opportunities to score early and, and so on. They were going in, and we caused a fumble at the goal line and so on. So our kids made, made the plays that allowed that game to get out of, out of reach uh, score-wise. Um, yeah, and especially your defenses looked especially solid and balanced thus far. Um, you know, week one, they only allowed 55 yards rushing with a 1.5 yard per carry average. This past week, they only allowed 40 passing yards, three completions. They had two interceptions. So they've really looked well on both sides. Um, you have... The new defensive coordinator, Coach Chris Keyes, um, what has he been doing with that defense to allow him to be so successful early on this season? He's been doing a great job. He's getting them uh, good fundamentally. You have to be good fundamentally first and foremost uh, in what whatever you're doing, and that and, and that's what I think our, our guys are getting good at. Uh, we're not uh, reinventing the wheel on defense or anything like that. Uh, we're just playing good, sound, fundamental football, and if we do that and keep the ball in front of us and don't let the ball behind us, uh, we got a chance to, to stop some people. And uh, I think Coach Keyes has been doing a good job uh, getting the kids prepared for what our opponents will do. Our kids in the first two games were not surprised by anything that either one of those offenses did on the field. They did nothing different than the, what they were prepared for. And uh, speaking of Coach Keyes, um, obviously filling that defensive coordinator position that opened up this past offseason um, had to be one of your top priorities. Um, Coach Keyes being a, a grad, graduate of, of St. John Fisher, 2010, a former player of yours, uh, what led to your hiring of him? Well, he's, uh, he's got a great resume. Uh, first of all, he played for us, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, we knew what type of player he was for us. He was a head, heady player. He knew the assignments at all times. Uh, he was a team guy, so we already knew that about him as a player, and we knew he'd be the same way as a coach. Then he had... Uh, he did a great job uh, and uh, coaching at other places, and I know all the coaches that uh, he coached for. I've talked to them, and they were very impressed with him. We were glad to have him, would have him back at any time. And, you know, that was the University of Rochester, and uh, he was also at Hartwick College and King's College, and the last school he was at was Salve Regina, who's a pretty good program over there. And every one of those staffs would welcome him back any time, so that speaks a lot when they will welcome you back. And, you know, him kind of filling a, a theme with your, your coaching staff, of a lot of them being former players of yours, um, does it make it a lot easier as you being the head coach of the team, knowing that all, all of your assistant coaches coming in from day one already know your system, already know your scheme, your philosophy and everything? Yeah, and I think because they're, they're cardinals. You know, they, they, uh, they understand our program, not just the football X's and O's, but the, what we expect in our program and <clears throat> expectations on and off the field. Uh, for our players and for our coaches and, and that. So it's, it does make an easier transition because they are cardinal people. So now um, obviously making the transition, you've got Cortland next week, so you're transitioning into the conference portion of your schedule. Um, how, do, how do you have to go out there and prepare a little differently? Um, Springfield, you guys haven't played since 2011. All of that, all of that uh, I'm not sure if you guys ever played them no, before. first time. So, um, you know, how do you have to go out there and prepare differently for teams and schemes that you aren't used to seeing year to year? Uh, you, well, you exchange film like with Olivet. Uh, we exchanged uh, the last three games of the 2015 season. We gave them our last three regular season games. They gave us theirs, so we got to look at them and uh, you know, uh, kind of know what they did offense. And they didn't change coaching staff, so we were pretty well convinced they would be running the same stuff again. And they had a lot of the same personnel back. The quarterback was back and their running backs and, and so on and so forth. And a lot of kids on defense back. So 
uh, that's how we prepared for them. And then, of course, with Springfield, we had played Springfield in the past, but we knew they weren't going to change. With their offense, that's the offense they've run for who knows how long. Mm -hmm. and, and that, But they were going to stay the same way and, and so on. And we did exchange uh, the first game of the season with them. And that's the only game we went off of was uh, their Western New England game, and they went off our Olivet and that. But, again, we had a little idea what they would do. Uh, we had a pretty good idea what they would do offensively because that's Springfield offense. That's mm -hmm. what it is. Um, so moving into Cortland, your first conference game again, second year in a row. Um, last year you came into the Cortland game. It was a little bit different feel on the team. That you were coming off that, that big loss to Thomas Moore, um, kind of going into the Cortland game. Now coming off the momentum of two wins, how much different is it for your team confidence-wise, momentum-wise, coming in with two wins to start the conference season as opposed to last year? Well, I think they have some more confidence in themselves as a, as a, pro, as a football team. I think they were confident coming into the season that they could – uh, win games and that, uh, but I think at the same time they, they know this will be a different opponent and it is a conference game and so the stakes are higher. Uh, every game's important and so this will be the most important game of the season so far because it's the one we're going to play. And um, so against Cortland, they have, they're a pretty balanced offensive team through the first two games, averaging 252 passing yards, 212, uh, 17 rushing yards, so they can beat you both ways. Um, your biggest issues against them last year really came a little bit more on the offensive end. The deficiency between the teams was, uh, you know, you guys only averaging 1.9 yards per carry, rushing the ball, and getting sacked five times. So, um, what do you what are you guys been preparing anything specifically to help kind of keep up and and uh, you know get a little bit better in those areas this year? Well, I think we're better offensively than we were a year ago. I think you know we got a lot of our offensive line back, our running backs are back, and uh, they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. So hopefully they'll continue to do so. And uh, we had our moments a year ago. Our first drive of the year against them, uh, or the game, uh, was an outstanding drive. We drove the field and scored, but then we kind of took a couple quarters off offensively and. Uh, we had some moments defensively. We, we need to put together a 60-minute game against these guys because they'll be ready to play for 60 minutes. We need to be ready to play for 60 minutes. All right, Coach. Well, we know tough Empire 8 schedule coming up, so hope you guys can get out there, start strong this week against Cortland. Thank you very much. After the break, quarterback Matt Nathan and linebacker David Carroll will be joining me, so stay here. Any questions? Uh, what kind of service plan does this come with? Unlimited. Can I keep my same phone number? Absolutely. How do I change the ringtone? Just hook it up to your computer. Does it have a camera? What's the warranty? Does it come in silver? Can I put my party shuffle on this? Does it have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack? You sell a lot of these? It's the one I carry. You ever get those phantom vibrations in your pocket? Any questions? No. Are you sure? Yeah. Ask questions. For the 10 questions everyone should know, go to AHRQ.gov. Back to Fisher Football Focus, joined now by senior quarterback Matt Dayton and junior linebacker David Carroll. Happy to have you guys on the show. Nice to be here. So, uh, Matt, we'll start with you. Um, you're entering your second season now starting quarterback. Um, last year at this time, a little bit of a different feel. You kind of had Danny Caton on your back. Um, it was kind of a battle throughout camp and even through the first couple of games of the season. So mm -hmm. I think you are able to kind of prepare for the season a little differently, knowing that you kind of were the man now at that position. Uh, definitely um, more confident coming into the season. Uh, mostly because of my knee injury last year. Coming back from that was pretty tough. Um, eight months off of surgery. Uh, but this year I felt confident, was in shape coming into camp, and uh, it's just real nice knowing that uh, I got control of the offense. So we were able to kind of take camp a little bit, a little bit differently, whereas, you know, uh, last year you were coming off the season where, you know, Tyler Fenty, Fenty was a starting quarterback. Uh, you kind of were on the bench kind of observing a little bit more. Um, coming off last season, having played all – 10 games uh, or 11 games, uh, you think you're able to kind of take it a little differently? Definitely. I knew how to prepare um, for that first game and for the whole season. Um, I knew uh, during camp it was going to be tough, but that we would get through it as a team and that uh, I had to be the leader that our team needed um, to get through camp. All right. And uh, so moving on to Dave. Um, you know, last year, you guys' leading tackler was Brandon Miller, um, you know, a huge senior leader, uh, line, sideline, the sideline linebacker. Um, with him graduating last year, you were the second leading tackler. So um, how comfortable are you kind of stepping into that position and being that kind of big tackle guy that comes in and, and leads the team in tackles all week? Uh, you know, hopefully I can lead the team in tackles every week. That's something, a personal goal that I'd like to do. But when it really comes down to it, as long as everybody on our team is flying around making plays, it doesn't always come down to me 
making tackles, as long as our whole defense is working as a unit. There's going to be times when I have off days. There's going to be times when we have safeties or you know, linemen that have off days. We just got to make up for it for one another. But it doesn't necessarily come down to me. Obviously, Brandon was a great linebacker and it's big shoes to fill. Hopefully, I live up to that this year. But as a defense, I think it really comes down to all of us stepping our game up, losing guys like him, like Jeff Carlin, other seniors. And how much easier was it, you know, last year your transition kind of from, you know, your freshman year being more of a JV player to last year being a pretty big role as a linebacker on this team, um, having like those leaders like Brandon Miller and stuff like that kind of leading you, and now you're kind of pull, moving up into that role? Yeah, so honestly the transition just kind of keep coming at this point. I was named captain this year, so that puts a lot of, a lot of weight on me as long as the other four captains really try to make sure that we're doing the right things and being the role models and leaders of this team. So there's even another transition from just being a starting guy to somebody that people are really looking for, looking for that energy, looking for, you know, big plays. So I'm just still transitioning, getting used to that position, but hopefully we're, I mean, after the 2-0 and start, it seems like we're filling it out pretty nicely right now. Um, so Matt, um, last year you, you guys lost, speaking of guys moving on, you lost a couple key receiver, receivers in Nathan Nagolian and Bobby Campisi, but mm -hmm. um, as uh, Mike Cleach proved this past week, um, you still got a pretty big weapon at receiver, oh, yeah. those two touchdowns. Uh, he can really just go out there and make plays. How much easier is, as, is it as a quarterback to be able to have a guy like that where you know you're going to toss it up and he's going to come down with it and make a play? That's great. Um, last year having Nagolian and uh, Bobby are like two of my best friends, so losing them was tough, but... Coming into this year, me and Mike worked over the summer, so I knew we were going to be pretty comfortable throwing. Um, also, my other weapons, Will Blake, Will Kuhn, uh, Derek Boland, Jim Chambers, a bunch, a bunch of guys um, can fill in those roles as well. We're very deep at the receiving core, and that makes me more comfortable as well. And Dave, uh, moving on to, to the similar question with the defense. You know, you, you're playing linebacker, but you know you have a secondary behind you with some experienced guys, returning starter and Anthony Lee, and obviously Alec Mortallaro, who kind of filled his quota of big interceptions again this <laughs> yeah. past week. Um, so is it you're able to play a little more aggressively knowing that you have kind of those ball hawking guys behind you in the secondary? Yeah, absolutely. We have we've had a great secondary so far this year. They've come out to play every game and we got a lot of seniors there. We're not necessarily in the linebacker core. We're starting a lot of juniors. So I've got some sophomores getting a couple reps, but we got a lot of age, a lot of talent back in that secondary. So, you know, you don't have to really worry about anything going over the top of us. We're just trying to make sure we're keeping everything in front of us. We're taking care of the run game, and we don't have to worry about that over the top because we got some really experienced guys that are locking down the fort back there. All right. Um, kind of question for both of you guys. Um, obviously, you just got done with your two non-conference games. Um, obviously, there's a little bit of a difference between preparing for a non-conference game and a conference game. Uh, how do you guys do it? How do you guys personally kind of prepare for a teams uh, like Olivet and like uh, Springfield that you guys don't really see, that you guys have never seen before, um, versus you know conference games where you, you kind of see the opponent every year? Yeah. Well, honestly, there isn't really too much. I mean, it's a little bit different just because it's an EA. It's a little bit different mentality coming into it. Every EA team is going to be great. You know, you're going to face. But we played two really good teams coming in in these the last two games. So we, we got to prepare just like we prepare for an EA team as them. We, you know, we got to be focused, mentally sharp coming into those games because we played two fantastic football teams. So personally, I think the preparation, no matter who we're playing, whether it's you know, worst team in the country versus the best. We got to prepare mentally and physically the same way, week in and week out. And feeding off Dave, um, <clears throat> I think the week of practice is the biggest thing for us. Is uh, starting on Tuesday, we start practice, and then Tuesday through Thursday, we got to have a great week of work. Um, and I think that focus has to stay throughout the whole week. Also, preparing for a team that we don't see, we really got to get in the film room and watch more film because we don't know what their tendencies are, stuff like that. When we get into Cortland week. We know what their tendencies are, but we got to get back in there to see the new players play. We got to see new personnel, see what their tendencies are, and uh, continue to work hard and get better every day. And moving on, you know, you guys do have Cortland next week. Uh, Matt, probably a relief for you uh, that four of the five sacks they had last year came from players that have already graduated. But uh, <laughs> what do you guys think? Um, what do you What do you think is going to be kind of the difference this year? Obviously, the 34-17 loss last year. What are you guys going to do a little differently this year to hopefully have a little bit more offensive success? About their score a little bit more for your team this year. I think uh, we're going to come out more confident than we had last year. Uh, last year we came off a big loss. We didn't know our identity as a team. I think this year is our our identity as a team is a hard working, hard nosed football team. They can they can put up big plays whenever we really uh, whenever we call our big play shots. Um, 
Also, I think uh, I think this year coming into Cortland week, um, I mean, we're just more experienced as well. Uh, we know what it's like to be in big games like that. We know what it's like to play in EA conference games. So uh, I think our preparation uh, will show what, uh, will show what we put out on the field. And Dave, um, you missed the Cortland game last year. Um, so uh, what, what are you going to go in here with the, this year, uh, having kind of missed it, missed it a little bit last year, um, not having seen these guys on the field before? Uh, what's your preparation going to be like? Well, hopefully I can make some sort of an impact going into the game. I'd, I'd really like to make sure that happens. But just like I said, you know, Cortland, they're going to be a great team. They're going to be one of the best teams we play all year. Um, they got a lot of athletes on the offensive side of the ball, especially their quarterback knows how to throw the ball and also loves to pull it down and run with it. So just knowing what they're going to do, making sure I'm in that film room studying a lot, seeing everything that they got to throw at us. And going back to last year's tape especially, trying to see what they've brought in the past. But... Their defense will definitely be ready come Saturday, and they got a lot of stuff that they're going to throw, but we got a lot of stuff that we're ready to throw right back at them. So. All right, awesome, guys. Well, thank you guys both for being on, and best of luck this upcoming weekend. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thanks. Up next, we have new defensive coordinator Chris Keyes joining us, so stay here. Welcome back to Fisher Football Focus. Joined now by newly hired defensive coordinator Chris Keyes, and we're very happy to have you on. Thanks for having me. And so, as you mentioned, even before football, you, this is kind of your home. 2010 Fisher grad, uh, graduate of the Fisher Communication Program. So, no stranger to this studio. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but moving back into the the football a little bit, you know, your first year here, um, you bounced around a few schools since graduating here in 2010. Um, what kind of left led you to want to come back? Um, well, I mean, like you said, this is my home. Um, graduated here a few years ago, and I'm, I'm from the local area out in Fairport. So um, really a good opportunity for me to um, take over an already very good defense um, and just kind of continue the, the winning tradition here at Fisher that, that we've had for, for many years in a row here. So um, I had, you know, great, great times and, and some really good memories with, my my fellow um, athletes here and then also had a great relationship with coach Vosberg and the the rest of the coaching staff so um, it's been a great transition back here and I learned a lot at all those other schools that I was at but it's definitely definitely great to be back. How hard was it as a coach kind of you were bouncing from you know for a while there, you're bouncing from school to school each year so can help to get a little more stability make your job a little bit easier here? Yeah absolutely I mean the toughest thing with with moving from school to school is you know you, you feel like you leave some players behind um, and you know whether they're whether they're senior or, or a freshman um, you start to develop a good relationship with the players and you start to get to know them on a personal level and and that makes it tough um, but I think um, for me it was it was I had to take advantage of the opportunities that were given to me and um, really each step that I made um, really helped me develop as a coach and learn a lot more about scheme and about different techniques to use and things like that so um, I think it's made me a better coach you know just bouncing around a little bit instead of staying in one area um, but also you know I've developed some really good relationships and I, and I still stay in contact with some of the players that I coached my first year so so uh, you, like Coach Kramer, offensive coordinator, and several other coaches on the staff, all played under Coach Fosberg here at Fisher. Um, is it a lot easier coming in, you know, coaching here as compared to walking into another school fresh, uh, knowing kind of the scheme, the system, the philosophy coming in here? Yeah, absolutely. It makes it a lot easier, the transition. Um, you know, Coach Vosberg does a really good job of staying consistent from year to year um, with his message and also his coaching style and, and the staff as well. Um, I think there's been uh, very little turnover here at Fisher the last couple of years with the coaching staff, and I think that's a credit to Coach Vosberg and, um, and also a credit to the whole athletic department and, and the winning tradition that, that they really um, try to embrace. So. Um, it's, it's really cool to be able to play or, or to coach with some of the guys that I played with um, mm -hmm. and a couple guys that, that came after me as well. So um, I think it helps the players as well. You know, you got a guy, you know, standing in front of you that, that's been through everything that they've gone through and, and had success at, at the highest level. So um, I think that makes it a lot easier for the players and the whole staff and, and the athletic department. 
you mentioned your good relationship with Coach Fosberg. How has that kind of relationship between you and Coach kind of changed from that of being a player underneath him to kind of now being his colleague and assistant coach? Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely different, um, but. Um, Coach Vosberg is, is still the same guy that, that I used to see, you know, on the practice field. You know, when I played a few years ago, he's still the same guy that he is now today. Um, so still, you know, was a great guy to play, to play for and, and is now a great guy to, to work for as well. So, um, like I said, he's very consistent with things, so he makes that transition a lot easier. And um, he's a very, um, very humble guy, um, even though that he's had some great success here. Um, he tries to... Um, instill that on his coaches and his players as well. And so, uh, picking up uh, picking up this defense um, here at Fisher, been you know Fisher obviously, as you know, a, very, a pretty successful program. Uh, what do you think about this specific group of players that you've picked up on defense? What do you think you're going to be able to do with them? You're seeing, you know, I mentioned with Coach Foster, you've had a lot of success the first couple of weeks. So, uh, should we expect to keep on seeing that going forward? Yeah, I, I think so. I think we've got a good group of, of guys that, that have contributed, you know, not just this year, but in years past, and um, a lot of um, great leadership on the defense. Um, we have a ton of seniors, uh, specifically on the defensive line, that, that, have, that have stepped up and stayed healthy. That's, that's been an important piece as well. Um, but, you know, our, our captains have done a great job, David Carroll, um, and, um, and DJ Liguori have, have done an awesome job um, helping lead that entire group. So um, we've had some, some changes, you know, a little bit scheme-wise, but, but overall um, a lot of it is the same for those guys. A lot of the terminology I've kept the same. So um, I think that's helped guys transition a little bit in, during, this, uh, during this fall. Yeah, I was going to get into that next. Um, you know, obviously you coming in, um, all these players being used to Coach Fox's system, um, how much of the old system did you, did you keep and how much of your own kind of twist are you putting in there? Uh, we, de we definitely um, kept a lot that, that was um, used in the past, specifically the terminology. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as signals and what things are called, they have a, a good familiarity with it. Um, it's a little bit different changing from a 3-3 to a 3-4. Um, so that's been, been a different transition for guys. Um, the nice thing was that um, before I got here, Coach Vosberg you know, implemented that, that system in the spring, so they were able to have some time to, to work on it. Um, you know, and, and I think really um, for our freshmen, it, would, it wouldn't make a difference. Mm -hmm. For them, it's, it's all brand new. So, um, and they've done a great job of picking up uh, picking up the scheme and, and understanding the pace is a lot different in the college game and understanding that um, the size is a lot different as well, um, but they've, they've done a good job transitioning as well. And so you're moving into Cortland next week. Um, Cortland has pretty prolific offense, uh, average nearly 470 yards per game total offense. Um, and, you know, as you mentioned uh, previously uh, on this show, you know, our off Fisher's offense returning a lot of guys, but uh, Cortland's is as well, returning starting quarterback um, uh, Stephen Furry, uh, several receivers. So what are you going to do to go out there? Um, obviously, we get, obviously, this Fisher defense get, uh, gave up 34 points to them last year. What are you guys going to do to try to be a little more successful this year? Um, yeah, I think, I think you mentioned their quarterback is a big key to their offense. Um, he definitely runs the show there. Um, and he's, he's a dual threat. He can throw the ball and run it as well. Um, so he's a key to that, that we definitely need to stop. Um, also, their run game you know, has been pretty solid. Um, like you said, they've racked up quite a few yards. So um, I think this week, um, you know, we, we want to be very physical this week um, and, and make sure that um, you know, we, can, we can dominate them up front and try to control the running game um, and make them have to try to throw it quite a bit on us. Um, so I, th I think one of the other things too that we've been really good at is, um, is tackling this year. Um, so we're going to continue to work on tackling this week and, and try to make sure that on Saturday we're, we're not missing any tackles and first guy there is, is, is ready to go and, and make the play. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Hopefully you guys can shut out this Cortland offense. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to check in next week when the Cardinals take on the Cortland State Red Dragons. For Cardinal Television, I'm James Bailey. Catch you next time.